and Charlie move on, but there's something good about the, the goodness of Jesus. When you begin to think of it, when you begin to think of it, you begin to praise your God. You begin to worship your God. You begin to magnify your God. He's worthy, Jesus. He's worthy, Jesus. Hey, hey. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. There's a sweet spirit in here. Hallelujah. Yes. We magnify your name, Jesus. We magnify your name. Hey. Oh, we glorify your name, Jesus. Hey. We lift you up, Jesus. Hey. Anybody come to worship her? We come to praise your name, Jesus. Hey. We give you glory. We give you glory. Come on, open up your mouth to praise. Let's ring the alarm. Let's sound the alarm, oh God. When praises go up. When praises go up. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and bless them. Oh, here I am to worship. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. You're hands together. Give God praise all over this place. Yes, oh God. 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 Here I am. Here I am.
for a little while to me. Worship God. Thank you, Jesus. To me, to me, to me. Thank you, Jesus. To me. Hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the water is troubled. The presence of the Lord is here. To me, to me, to me, to me, to me. To me, to me, to me, to me. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of 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 Jesus. In every renewing in the name of Jesus. 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 Everybody that can, can you stand on your feet and begin to clap your hands and give God oh the God, biggest praise oh that God, you have? Oh God. Come on, give him the biggest praise that you have. Come on, give him the biggest praise that you have. Don't hold anything back. Don't hold anything back. How many of you feel the presence of the Lord in this place? To me, to me. To me, 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 Open up your mouths and worship God. By the end of the service, woman of God, I want you to have what you want from the Lord. Are you? Yeah. By the end of the service, I want which I want you to think about it, because God's going to give it to you. Though other exterior motives try to kill it, God's going to give it to you. Are you listening to me? And it is so in the mighty name of Jesus. Mama, I'm asking God for more days, healing and wholeness. I'm asking him for more days, healing and wholeness. Just better days in the mighty name. Don't you let this settle in your heart. Healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Renewing your strength, man of God. Renewing your strength. Clap your hands and give him praise. Amen. Good morning, Virtual Church. Good morning, Change Church family. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey! Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. As we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, we enter his courts with praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a few moments before we read our scripture. For we are excited on this. I feel a miracle for you 
in the house. I feel a miracle for you in the house. I receive it. I feel a miracle for you. I receive it. In the I feel a miracle for you. I receive it. I told you there's a miracle in the house for you. Now, yes. those of you who have been with this I ministry long it. enough, you know this is a prophetic ministry. When I tell you I there was a miracle in the house for you all today, clap yeah. your hands yeah. and say, my God, they're not trying to hear. There's a miracle in the house. There's a miracle in the house. Lord of the breakthrough. You are. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. Worship you and we worship you. Say Lord, Lord of the breakthrough. Lord, Lord of the breakthrough. You are the you Lord. are the Lord of the breakthrough. And we worship, and we you. worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Singing Lord, Lord of the breakthrough. you sing Lord, Lord of the breakthrough Lord of the breakthrough you are the Lord you are the Lord of the breakthrough and we worship, and we worship you we worship, we worship you Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. I want the intercessors who know their prophets to stand up really quick. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. We worship you. In the name of you, begin prophetic worship. Begin worshiping prophetically right now. I want you to understand your position. Understand your position. Stand up, Lorraine. We worship you. That's why the enemy couldn't take you out. He wanted to kill you. He could because the prophetic had not been birthed out of you. Are you hearing me? Come on now, open up your mouth and begin to worship God. Begin to worship. In the name of I want every prophet in this house to begin to worship. Every prophet in this house to begin to worship. Every prophet in this house begin to worship. Come on, begin to worship. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. We worship you in the name of Jesus, Lord. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, and we worship you. And it is so. We worship you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have can have your way. Take control. Let me give this word according to your will and your grace. Be ye glorified on today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Standing to your feet, let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah! Genesis. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
We're in part two of a series that we're calling the principle of calling it forth. And I want you to yell loud as you can. I'm going to stay in his will. I'm going to stay in his will. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to stay in his will. I'm going to stay in his will. Amen. Look at somebody else you might like a little better. High five them and say, I'm going to stay in his will. I'm going to stay in I'm his gonna will. I'm going to stay in God's will. I'm going to stay in I'm going to stay in God's will. I'm going to stay, stay in, in God's will. will. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 It's so good to have you. You are wondering why we are dressed, some of us in white, and why I have my garb on. It is because as God is establishing this ministry as both a prophetic and a deliverance ministry, one of the ministries he told me to establish, it was an evangelism first. We do outreach, but that wasn't the main focus. The Lord said, I want you to anoint and establish intercessors. Intercessors. So we can change the atmosphere in Riverside. I declare and decree that we will change the atmosphere in Riverside. It is so. Y'all going to get used to the prophetic after a while. I declare and decree six years from today, write it down, that every single ominous stat in Riverside will go down because we're praying. Listen. And it is so. Let me prophesy. Human trafficking will go down. <sighs> Y'all not true. Suicides will go down. In and it is so. Listen, murder will go down in this. And it is so. Hey! Hate crimes will go down in this. And city. it is so. Write it down, write it down. Six years from today, the mayor going to take credit, but we know who it's going to really be. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Because the hand of God is on this. Yes, yes. Listen, go and have a seat. So we're under assignment and I'm under mandate to give you this word. This is not going to be a word that makes you happy. This is going to be a word that's going to show you where you are in Christ. As a prophet, I don't necessarily, <laughs> how can I say this, Holy Ghost? I don't have the liberty to preach what I want to preach. Yeah. I don't have that luxury as some preachers and pe people can get up and take a sermon and preach what they want. No, no. I like sleeping very good at night. When I don't preach what God tells me to do, it'd be some long weeks. So I've decided to let you be mad at me and let God be pleased. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> amen. So musicians, you're dismissed. Let's say amen for our music staff. Amen. Just faithful, faithful men of God. Amen. Men of integrity, men of strength, I praise God for you. And just all the saints and the people of God this morning. Let's get into it. So the objective of this series is one to show you the principle of calling it forth. Somebody say, call it forth. Call it forth. And to teach you how to apply this principle to your life. The second objective of this series is to show you how to get miracles out of you that you may not know even exist. And the third objective of this series is to empower you and teach you how to live in the realm of prophetic creation. Somebody say prophetic creation. Prophetic creation. Come on, say prophetic creation. Prophetic creation. What that is saying is that you will possess the ability to speak into the atmosphere in this prophetic realm and what you speak actually materializes. How many of you have ever been in a service and you heard them say, speak it, call it forth and nothing never happens? 
How many of you called for things and you believed and it still did not happen? That is because you did not know the principle of calling it forth. And under the principle of calling it forth, you can only call forth things that are out of the realm of prophetic creation when you're accessed or you have the privilege of being there. Listen, oh God. Somebody say, God, give me the privilege. God, give me the privilege. Of accessing the realm. Of accessing the realm. Of prophetic creation. Of prophetic creation. Each week we're going to be speaking about another aspect of this principle of calling it forth because it is a conglomeration of several principles put together that will align you to the place where you can actually speak those things that are not as though they were. And let me apologize to you on behalf of every pastor and prophet or any individual that has ever given you this word without giving you the principles behind it. Because for you to call things forth, that means that you are operating in the same creative power that God was operating in when he said, let there be and there was. And so you have to be strategically positioned with God to understand how to flow in that. I rebuke that tired, slumbering spirit off the intercessors in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Wake yourself up in the name of Jesus. Don't you let the devil steal this word out of your spirit. Don't let him steal it out of your spirit. You'll miss your activation, prophet. So let's review a little bit. A principle is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief, behaviors, or a chain of reasoning that has a predictable outcome. Somebody say predictable. Predictable. It is predictable. A principle is a fundamental truth that serves as a foundation for a system of belief, behavior, or a chain of reasoning that has a predictable outcome. Somebody say predictable. Predictable. Say this with me. When a principle is consistently applied. When a principle is consistently applied. The desired outcome is constantly reached. The desired outcome is constantly reached. Say it again. When a principle is consistently applied. When a principle is consistently applied. The desired outcome is constantly reached. The desired outcome is constantly reached. Amen, amen. Consistent means I'm doing something the same way over and over again over a period of time. Constant means that as a result of me being consistent, the outcome will never change. We always hear that term, uh, the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing expecting a different result. But sometimes consistency and doing the right thing all the time over the period of time will give you a constant and a result that you actually look forward to. Amen. Amen. So it is in your consistency. Now, we broke down the, the, the principle of visitation, the principle of giving, the principle of tithing, and we're not going to touch that. We'll do that on Bible studies. But I want you to hear this. With the understanding of what a principle is, let me tell you what the principle of calling of forth states. By consistently applying the revelation, somebody say revelation. Revelation. Of the will of God for your life. You will use your authority, aptitude, and awareness to constantly proclaim a spiritual mystery and Jesus will cause it to manifest in your right now. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. I have to take my time and make sure you understand this. By consistently, somebody say consistently. Consistently. Applying the revelation of the will of God for your life. Somebody say will of God. Will of God. You will use your authority aptitude and awareness to constantly proclaim a spiritual mystery and Jesus will cause it to manifest in your now. According to the principle of calling it forth, listen, once you have been given the prophetic word and you accept it as the will of God for your life, you will use your authority 
aptitude and awareness to access spiritual mysteries that were previously hidden to you and cause it to manifest in your life just by speaking a word. Oh, you're not kidding it. So let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to do a forensic study on this definition. And the first thing we're going to break down is by consistently applying the revelation of the will of God for your life. By consistently applying the revelation of the will of God for your life. The Bible is deeply concerned about the will of God. God's sovereign authority over his creation and everything in it is a part of God's perfect plan that will bring redemption to those who will accept God through Jesus Christ. Now, how many of you feel comfortable and you know and understand the complexities of the will of God? Lift up your hands. How many of you are comfortable enough where you can teach it to somebody? Okay, so good. This is the right message. Amen. Kind of, kind of hunch your neighbor and say, pay attention. Come on, tell them, pay attention. In fact, tell them, don't let that sleep demon get you. Because it's a demon. Listen to this. We loosely throw around the term the will of God without possessing a working understanding of the functionality of the will of God and how it works and how it moves. That it's, 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 it's my mandate today to teach you about the will of God from two perspectives that would allow you to shape a fundamental, functional understanding of the will of God. The first perspective is the permissive will or the preceptive will of God. Somebody say the permissive. The permissive will. The second perspective is the perfect or the sovereign decreative will of God. So you have the permissive and the perfect will. Now what the Holy Spirit showed me that these two perspectives, although there are many, will help you maintain the benefit of flowing and living in the perfect will of God while also allowing you to recognize when you have detoured into the permissive will of God. Wow. Did you hear that? These two perspectives will help you maintain the benefit of flowing and living in the perfect will. Somebody say perfect will. Perfect will. While also allowing you to recognize when you have detoured. Somebody say detoured. Detoured. Into the permissive will of God. Let me define for you the permissive will or the perceptive will of God. It simply states, listen. As a result of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, God provides himself the grace to tolerate your self-imposed deviations to the perfect path he originally planned for you. Yeah. Did you get that? Oh, God, I know. I'm not going to hit the keys yet. You know, I'm good for hitting them keys. Let me tell you what the permissive will of God is or the perceptive or the perceived will of God simply states as a result of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, God provides himself the grace to tolerate your self-imposed deviation to the perfect path he originally planned for you. In other words, the love of God through Jesus Christ allows God to tolerate or endure you making a mess of your life while giving you the grace to realign yourself with the plan that God has for you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you for grace. <laughs> yes. I'm going to give myself the grace to tolerate you making a mess of your life. Somebody say, God's going to give himself the grace. God's going to give himself the grace. <laughs> <laughs> Who, listen, I will need you to hear all of this word. The grace and the permissive will 
allows you to experience some of the good things that God has for you in order to accomplish the goal of maintaining a good relationship with you. Matthew 5 and 45 says that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son rise on the evil and the good and sending rain on the just and the unjust. I want you to understand that it is not God's will for any to perish. Thus some of the blessings you receive in the permissive will of God is simply because you're a human being. Just because you're a human being, he blesses. When God blesses you despite of yourself, he is telling you, I still love you. When God blesses you when you're in your wrong, he is telling you, I still want a closer relationship with you. Listen, however, clap your hands twice. However, the permissive will of God is deceptive. Because you start to believe that you know what's best for you. More than God, only to be led to a place where you have to call on God, where you recognize you actually need him. For instance, Jonah in the third chapter, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. But Jonah went to Tarshish. And because Jonah went to Tarshish, he ran into calamity. Somebody say calamity. Calamity. Come on, do your hand like this and say calamity. Calamity. Y'all not doing that, but I say calamity. Calamity. That's a whole bunch of trouble. Calamity. Just, I'm just going through, amen. Calamity. Watch this. And he was thrown overboard and he wound up in the belly of a fish for three days. But the Bible says Jonah prayed and the fish spat Jonah up on the shore. Let me show you what happens next in the permissive will of God. Jonah 3, 1 and 2. The Bible says next, God spoke to Jonah a second time. He spoke to Jonah a second time. And I'm reading from the Message Bible. Up on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. They're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. Listen to me and hear me closely. God put him back on the shore. And he still had to make the same journey to Nineveh. Because there was revelation that needed to happen on his journey that the permissive will could not teach him. There are things that you are missing in your life because you are aborting the lessons and being in the perfect will of God. And you can't access the blessings God has for you because you're living in the permissive will of God. You're living in the place where you think your own will and your own agenda is what's best for you. Jesus. Ah. Yes, Lord. Listen to this. So many times you are going through unnecessary trauma. You're wasting so much time because you don't obey first instructions. Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody say, obey first instructions. Obey first instructions. For instance, when God says, be quiet when you're dealing with your spouse. That doesn't mean be quiet until you ain't mad. That means shut up until I tell you to speak again. But we take it upon ourselves. We're like, I'm not mad no more. I can tell him, okay. Ba, 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 ba. And you end up making shipwreck. Because you did not listen to the first instruction. How many of you, God told you to sow into the 320 seed a certain amount and you didn't sow it? And you got a little blessed and not realize what you actually asked for was in your obedience. How many of you, God said to fast today? Man, th this is the worst right here. <laughs> this is the worst right here. Have you ever woke up one morning and it's not your fast day? And the Lord said, fast today. And you'd be like, mm-mm. 
I, I know that sounds bad, but I be really having conversations with the Lord. Like, mm. Lord, it's not Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's not Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Jesus. <laughs> and you end up having the worst day. Because you took it upon yourself just because you have your agenda of fasting that you can't be led by the Spirit of God in your instructions. Some of you are in trauma and struggling and going through heartaches and going through hard times because you're disobedient to your first instruction. What did God tell you first? Listen, the permissive. <laughs> I knew I was going to lose you guys. That's why. No, we, we I was really it. trying to stay in that vein of worship. Hallelujah. Come on, bless his name. Come on, Holy Ghost. Save me, Lord. Save me. No. Listen to this. The permissive will of God causes delays because you're operating in your own understanding. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own. Listen to this. You can tell when you're in the permissive or the perceptive will of God. Because after a trauma, the opportunity to do the right thing presents itself a second time. The opportunity... Presents itself for the second time. And until then, you stay in the permissive will of God. It's the faithfulness of God that causes the opportunity to do the right thing to present itself. Have you ever been in a situation and you said, I've been here before? Wait a minute. Different person, different time, different clothes, different car, different season, but the exact same trial, the exact same temptation. And God is saying, I'm trying to get you out of the permissive into the perfect will of God. So I represented the opportunity again. Some of you have left jobs. I'm tired of them. Uh-uh. uh mm I'm gone. I'm edumacated. Yeah, it's edumacated. Not educated, edumacated. <laughs> I'm going to a different job. These people get on my nerves. They don't even see the talent. They don't know what I bring. They don't know what I got. I'll make this company run. I'll do my thing. And the Holy Ghost says, stay right there. Loose here, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of limitations. I don't receive that. You know, was the Holy Ghost talking to you? You go to your next job. A year later, they're treating you the same way, the same thing going on, the same thing happening, and you wonder why. It's because God is presenting an opportunity for you to get back in the perfect will of God. Somebody says, stay in the perfect will of God. Stay in the perfect will of God. Listen, the permissive will or perceptive will of God simply states, as a result of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, God provides himself the grace to tolerate yours. Somebody say, mine. Mine. Say, mine. Mine. My self-imposed deviations to the perfect path he originally planned for me. Listen to this. The permissive will of God is not God's best for you. 
because it eventually impacts your ability to recognize righteousness. Somebody say, it ain't cool. It ain't cool. To be in the permissive will. To be in the permissive will. Am I unplugging some of your understanding of the, perfect, uh, of the permissive will? Because it has been taught in popular Christendom that the, well, that's just the permissive will of God. You do not want to be in the permissive will of God. Because it is not God's best for you. Romans 1 28 says, and because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. When's the last time you heard that in church? When you begin to dwell in the permissive will or the perceptive will of God, you are dwelling in a semblance of truth, but denying the power thereof. 2 Timothy 3, 4, and 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. When you live in the permissive will of God, you are denying the power of God. When you live in the permissive or the perceptive will of God, you are living, listen, in a deviated walk with God. Because, oh, oh boy, this is okay. You're living in a deviated walk with God because you begin to use the things of God to support your own agenda instead of seeking God's intention for what he gave you. Listen, thus you pervert a blessing by disregarding it, minimizing it, and using it in a way that God did not intend for it to be used. You pervert a blessing. God gives you a child and you abuse him. God gives you a wife or a husband and you mistreat him. I didn't respect my daddy. What? Who are you? I didn't put the gas in the car for my mama. Who are you? And then you end up losing your blessing because you pervert the purpose of it being there. God gives you a good job and you lose it because you don't have integrity. You get there five minutes late, 8.05, but you put 8 o'clock. Yeah. I lost about half the room I did. Zip. Therefore, God can't trust you with the promotion. Because why would he put his child in a position to bring dishonor to the kingdom? I didn't write this. I wrote it, but I was like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen to this. I'm almost, give me about a few more minutes. Spiritual minutes. <laughs> Somebody say, take spiritual minutes, Pastor. <laughs> spiritual minutes. You know, one day is a thousand, and a thousand is one day. I'm taking spiritual minutes right now. <laughs> listen, listen to this. <laughs> when you live in the permissive will of God, you're trying to superimpose your will over God's plan. And there are consequences to these actions. Listen to these consequences. The first consequence of living in the permissive will of God is you begin to settle into a wrong that you are so comfortable in, it's hard to see the sin anymore. And it's even harder to get out. Have you ever had that situation? <laughs> you ever 
ever had that crisis when you first do it? It's like, oh, God, forgive me, Jesus. The next time you do it, oh, God, forgive. The next time, oh, God. The next time, God understands. And the next time, you don't even repent. That's the consequences of staying in the permissive will of God. When you lose your ability and you settle in the wrong and it's so comfortable, it feels right. Have you ever been in that situation where you do something so long, you start saying, God understands my heart. Judge not. Let he without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. Listen to this. The second consequence of living in the permissive will of God is you become dull to the spirit of God. And it's hard to recognize his presence. People could be praising and worshiping God. And you're sitting there like, I don't feel anything. What are you, I, I used to feel it. What happened? It's because you're in the permissive will of God. Listen, the third consequence of living in the permissive will of God is you start losing things. Because some blessings, listen, require a pure life to maintain. The fourth consequence of living in the permissive will of God, listen, you experience an inability to call things forth. Because you're calling from your own will and not God's will for your life. And if you're not careful, some things you are doing in the permissive will of God will cause God to remove a level of grace from your life and your actions will begin to impact everything connected to you. Your children live according to your decisions. Listen, your children live in privilege where you had to fight for it in faith. And if you are continuously making permissive will of God decisions, it will ultimately impact your child. Case in point, when Adam and Eve were sitting in the garden, can you imagine if Adam said, you know what, Eve, I'm cool on that, but let's just stay in the perfect will of God. We wouldn't even know what death was. Some of you are living in decisions that your mother and father made. Some of you are looking at your children and it's like, what is wrong with you? And if they had theological concept, it was like, your decisions. <laughs> the permissive will of God or the perceptive will of God works directly. Somebody say directly. Directly. Against the principles of calling it forth. Because it makes you susceptible to the limits of time. Because the permissive will robs you of time. Yes, God is gracious. Yes, God is loving. But he is also graciously just. So I have to ask you this question. What is in your life or what are you currently involved in that you know isn't God's best for you? Do you have it in your mind? My next question is, is it really worth it? Is that drug really worth it? Is that money really worth it? Is that six foot five and yoked really worth it? Is that five foot something bow leg really worth it? 
Now, that's serious. Is it really worth it? Because you're taking that thing, that person, and you're putting in the place of God. What you're saying is when you call that person, or when you indulge in that thing, or you're involved in that thing, you knew God said leave it alone. I mean, you knew God said leave it alone. What you're saying is I bow to you because now you're my God. Hello? Hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? I'm fine. Holy Ghost, leave him alone. He ain't no good. <laughs> leave him alone. He ain't no good. Hey, so, you know what I'm saying? You can do my if I come over like two. He ain't no good. Leave him alone. He ain't going to go nowhere. God, you understand? Yeah, see, you're at two. <laughs> you just bow down and call that man your God. Men, we see them, 8 to 80, dumb, crippling, crazy. That was a Big Daddy Kane lyric. For, 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 <laughs> y'all way too old for me here. I got to get newer. Jay-Z, is it Jay-Z? <laughs> I had to break up the room a little bit. Y'all looking ominous up there. Bro. That very woman walking by. And the Holy Ghost says, that's not yours. That's not yours. But Jesus. <laughs> it's not good for man to be alone, Jesus. And she's by herself. I need to give her a blessing. I'm created in your image and in your likeness. And that ends up being the worst mistake you've ever made. The Lord told me to tell you this. As soon as you stop blaming him and come into the understanding that your own will and agenda are often the causes of the condition of your life is when he's going to move you out of the permissive will into the perfect sovereign will so you can live in your abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Clap your hands. Have a seat. Now say pay attention. Amen. Let me tell you what living in the perfect, sovereign, decreative will is. It means that by the grace of Jesus Christ, you are living by the revelation of the word of God, both in scriptures and in the prophetic declaration over your life. In other words, to operate in the principle of calling it forth, you have to know both the word of God in scripture and the prophetic word that has been spoken over your life. Matthew 4 and 4 says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you live or when you're in the perfect will, somebody say perfect will. Perfect will. Watch this. Perfect purpose will come and overtake you. Because you're in a position to receive divine instructions. Whenever I hear people asking, what is my purpose? I can show you someone that has been inconsistent in their relationship with God. You don't understand your purpose. Because at Pivotal and critical times that God was giving you direction, which way to go, where to live, where to stay. You chose your own agenda that accumulated over time. And now you're wondering, where is my purpose? The principle of calling it forth 
is only operational in the perfect will of God. Somebody say perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. Because it's relationship driven. Listen, in this relational posture, whatever we decree comes to pass. As we are operating from a position of grace because you are honoring God's word and the prophetic word over your life. You consistently commit to a relationship with God where you put his agenda over yours, period. When you live in the perfect will of God, listen, it is a sacrificial relationship with God. The perfect will of God is a sacrificial relationship. Because in all of your decisions, you recognize that your opinion doesn't matter. Feelings does not matter. You mean to tell me that Jesus Christ wanted to die? You mean Jesus Christ wanted to be nailed to the cross? Was it not Jesus Christ that said, Father, if it, if it be any way, if thou be willing, let this cup pass from me. When was the last time you had to tell God, Lord, if there's any way, let this pass from me. Nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. If you are not living in that lifestyle, you are not in the perfect will of God. Because the perfect will of God requires a, a sacrifice. It is uncomfortable living in the perfect will of God. It's lonely living in the perfect will of God. Sometimes you're misunderstood living in the perfect will of God. Sometimes you gotta be by yourself, but I'd rather be safe in the will of God. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Somebody say, stay in the perfect will of God. Stay in the perfect will. If it doesn't hurt, you're not in his will. If you didn't have to tell somebody no, you're not in the will. If you never had to put do not answer in your phone for somebody that is your addiction, you are not in the... So why y'all just taking any calls? Sidebar. Hold up. Sidebar. Come on, sidebar. Real quick. We're going to sidebar over here. Why are y'all just taking the calls and you know that individual is an addiction for you? Ooh, oh, Lord, help me with Benny, Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord. You know what you need to do? Change the name on your phone. He gonna cause you to lose your anointing. And every time the phone rings, he gonna cause you to lose an anointing. He gonna cause you to lose an anointing. Never mind, Benny, goodbye. Why don't you change the name of the alcohol bottle? Well, it got quiet, oh, but you better get off my Mad Dog 2020 and my Lime Green Hennessy. Get off that Hennessy, Lord. Get off that gin and juice now. <laughs> well, it got quiet. Ooh, God be with you. talking about <laughs> you do what you do in your moderation according to your conviction with God but I'm talking about when that alcohol becomes an answer oh I just had a hard day oh mm -mm. Uh -uh. I ain't going in prayer I'm about to chill that line that, that. Hold on, what's that green apple Hennessy now they got out 
I'm about to get that. I'm about to get that green apple Stella Rose, bro. I need to, I need to relax. I ain't gonna call on Jesus. Oh no. I'ma get some wine. Change the name of it and say the longer I'm intoxicated, the more I lose revelation of my life. I hear you holding. Okay. I, I'm going to do what the Lord said. Those that have a sacrificial relationship with God are allowed to bless the people by a spoken word. Because you're operating in the principle of calling it forth. Listen, a sacrificial relationship with God means I'm going to live in integrity even if it costs me. I'm going to forgive people even if they never apologize. I'm going to seek the face of God even when it's uncomfortable. And when you do this, God will let you speak and those things happen. Now, let me show you case in point. How many of you have been blessed in the 320 experience? Amen. Some of you guys don't know about it. It's cool. For the church of our size, last week, we said, whoever has not been blessed by the 320 experience, come on up. And it was only five out of the entire congregation. Have you seen all the miracles that have been transpiring in this church? <laughs> per, per average, per average, there are some churches that don't even see this kind of movement. And it seems like every Sunday, every other Sunday, three, four, five people getting up and say, man, I went and I got $24,000. Man, I got delivered from this. And over and over again, you want to know why that is happening? Because the Lord has allowed us to access the realm of prophetic creation where we can speak things over your life and God is compelled to do it. Because we are, listen, pay attention, listen. Because we're willing to live a sacrificial life. Amen. Listen, no, no, listen, listen. The 320 experience has come about by the sacrifices of MIT and people who are constantly praying for you. Your blessing cost. Some days the Lord says, Laura has come before me. It's two o'clock in the morning. So I text you or I call you. Yes, I'm that pastor. When the Lord puts you in my spirit, I'm going to call you. And I told you, if you answer your phone in 30 days, you will see what you've been praying for. Sadly, not one person has answered their phone yet. I heard that in the spirit. Call me, brother. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> Give pastor a special ring. <laughs> I swear I heard that in the spirit. Call me, brother. There are some people I've sent text messages to. I said, the Lord says, so your whole check. And that's the, that right there. Y'all hear that right there? Even, even though there has been over 35 testimonies of people that have followed prophetic instructions and God blessed them. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Are you willing to make a sacrifice 
to stay in the perfect will of God. The sacrifice simply means I will always do what pleases God. The perfect will of God is not some deep theological discussion about the separatism of creation. It's simply saying, I want to always be obedient to whenever God tells me. How many of you have ever been frustrated in your Christian walk? Frustrated? How many have honestly looked at yourself and found out you were the reason of your frustration? See, that's the truth. Lord, you said you was going to come through. Lord, I believe I'm standing on your word. <laughs> you blaming God for your own decisions. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Stay in the perfect will. Stay in the perfect will. I'll say this and then I'm done. I'm done, done. I'll cover the rest on Bible study. I can guarantee you, as a man of God, every single time I've ever had to make a hard decision that I knew would please God, but it would make discomfortable. It would make me discomfortable. He has always blessed me. And every time I consistently made bad decisions, I continue to reap the bad things. I told you last week, my car started up. When, I was, when the Lord was beginning to deal with me about going into ministry, I had a Chevy Trailblazer. Love that Trailblazer. Those are some good cars, man. Well, I put a sound system in my Trailblazer, right? And they put a bad switch on it. Well, little did I know that that switch will cause your car to start up and then catch on fire. By itself. I walk outside and my trailblazer is on fire. And me not being obedient to God, can I be transparent? The Lord let me go months without insurance. But that one month, God said, renew your policy. Have you guys ever been there where you have strategic insurance? <laughs> Somebody say strategic insurance. Strategic. I got strategic insurance. <laughs> I don't pay it every month, but when the Lord put it in my spirit, I need it. I'm going to go ahead and pay it because I got strategic insurance. I'm led of the spirit in my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I walked for six months because everything in my life went wrong. I was pastoring, preaching faith, and asking for a ride home. I remember one day I asked a gentleman, he was coming frequently. I said, hey, brother, God moved today. He sure did, man. And so he was picking me up, and he was taking me back and forth. So I stood by his car, and he goes, who's to say I'm giving you a ride home today? Wow. I did a little bird man hands, you know, I was like, okay. And the Lord said, go to this dealer and go get you a car. I was like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I knew you would come through. I knew you would come through. The Lord led me in this lot of sin. Audis, and Cadillacs, Escalades. And he stopped me in front of this raggedy Yukon. It had been sitting there so long, it had cobwebs on the tire and ants had crawled into the radiator. 
the Lord said, that's your car. <laughs> the devil is a lie. I told you, I use the word of God. God, you said I'm the head and not to tell I'm above and not beneath. That does not represent a man of God living in integrity for you. That is your car. And I'll paraphrase it. I don't receive that. I went and bought an Audi A5. Black on black. Black rims. Clean tinted the windows. Chocolate black. And from the day I got it, it almost cost me $1,500 a month in repairs every month on the month. I was in the permissive will of God. Here's the thing. I even prayed. I said, Lord, here is thou servant. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. And the car kept breaking down. To this day, I am paying for a car four years later that don't even work. It's in the garage. Shh, beautiful. Black. A5. Leather on leather. Six CD changer. Because I bought it back in 10. Not working. And I'm still paying for it. Every single month, thank you, Mr. Wallace, for your payment. <laughs> Until I got to the point, watch this, now this is the key. The Lord said, now, don't go get a car yet. I want you to share with your wife. No, she got a Mercedes. No, you know, praise the Lord. Ha, ba, ba, sha. He said, don't get a car yet. I want you to double up for about eight months. I was like. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I was like, baby, I got some good news and some bad news. The good news, I love you. The bad news, we're going to be sharing your car for about eight months. have learned the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of yes. God. Hallelujah. Real quick. Hallelujah. You guys know I'm not full-time ministry. I own a business. And I could go get me a whip. But let's just share a car about eight months. I was so glad about 20 days ago he said, and I'm putting dubs on it right now, okay? I'm laying on putting dubs on it. Oh, great man of God. <laughs> you have been faithful over a few things. <laughs> Go on the Tesla side and order you a Model Y. Hey. Now, it won't be here until December, though, but... <laughs> And watch this. That car will get over 300,000 miles on it, the Lord already told me. Amen. And that's how God restores the years that the locust and the canker worm and the caterpillar. Hallelujah. So I challenge you right now. This is my challenge to you. Listen, pay attention. Thank you. I want you to right now let go of that thing that God just dropped in your heart just now. Let go of it and tell God, I surrender all. Now, if this message has applied to you, I want you to stand to your feet and begin to give God praise. 
because God is going to, yes. 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 Listen, you see that? You're not by yourself. I'm a man of God. I hear the voice of God. When I hear, I hear. When I see, I see. But obedience. If the Bible says even Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. But I promise you this. Listen, if you suffer with him, you will reign with him. Me and my wife may have to share cars right now. But sometime between December and March, I don't ever have to see a gas station ever again. <laughs> Y'all can keep that $7 a gallon. The devil is a lie. <laughs> Surrender. Surrender. How many of you guys did the no TV challenge? No internet challenge? <laughs> How many of you guys, it was super hard to do it? How many of you guys met God in your prayer after about four or five days, though? This is your challenge for the week. Listen to your challenge. Are you ready? <laughs> this is your challenge. This is prophetic. I want you to walk through your life. And disconnect from everybody that God has told you should not be in your life. I hear this in the spirit. Walk through. This is what the Lord is saying. Walk through your life. And every single person God told you to disconnect from, I want you to disconnect from them during this week. By the end of this year, watch who you meet. The issue is there is no room for who God wants to bring to you. There's no room. There's no room for that person. There's no room for that thing, that career, that job, whatever it is that you know. How many of you guys, show of hand, that, that, that thing has crossed your mind already. It's crossed your mind already. Mm -hmm. Walk it out this week. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare and decree that every single red pasikan, Lord, every single person, Lord, Lord, we're going to walk this thing out. We're going to walk it out. And we're going to look at every single thing and person that you have told us, not just once, not just twice, but every time you're around that thing, every time you're in that thing, every time you're around that person, Lord, you tell me that that's not my best for you. Give me the strength and the courage to let it go. Give me the strength and the courage. Come on, open up your mouth and pray in your heavenly language. Let's supercharge the atmosphere. Woman of God, come here. Come here. Give me my mints, man of God. Give me my mints, In the name of Jesus, and I let go, and I let God. Let God have his way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back When I let go and I let God. Let God have his way. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how my story is, when I let go and I'll let God, let God have His way. That's when my 
mother, can somebody grab mama's hand? When somebody I grab mama's hand, Yoli mom. Somebody grab. First lady, first lady, go grab mama's I hand. No, no, stay right where you are, mama. Stay right where she is, honey, and just, and just, just grab her hand. Who else renewing of the strength? Who else? Who did I point to earlier? Renewing of strength. Woman of God. Let go. How can I help? Let go. 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 Okay. Okay. Do you have a picture of her? I want every single parent, listen, I want every parent that has ever wrestled with a wayward child to stretch her hands towards this woman of God right now. Every single parent that has wrestled with a wayward child. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends. When I let go and I let go. What's her name? Okay. Let go. What's her name? This way. Aubrey. Okay, what's her whole name? Start happening when I start Abriata Simone Warren Patterson. I want every single person in this place say Abriana Simone, Simone Warren, Warren Patterson. Patterson. We'll get minimal. We'll get minimal. And every single weapon. And every single weapon. That the devil tried to destroy her with the the devil tried tried to destroy her. will be reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. Will be reversed in the mighty name of Jesus. Now begin to pray for her right now. She will have a testament. Come on, everybody that has, oh, come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. A miracle! A miracle! A miracle! A miracle! A miracle! Lord, Lord, a miracle! Lord, we declare it now. So, oh yeah, a miracle! A miracle! And when she gets her miracle, tell her, her I want to see her in this house. Because what God's going to do for her is going to be a miracle. In the name of Jesus, and it is so. Stretch out your hands, man of God, just anoint this. In the name of Jesus. Mary, did you, did, did you switch that over yet? Did you switch that over yet? All right, yeah, Rabata Shim. She come at Tadabo, she cut up a Tadabo Sekata. Listen, I declare, listen, I declare prophetically the enemy wants to. Let me, let me say this. I rebuke you, say the enemy wants to distract and destroy. He wants to distract and destroy. But God's going to give her a miracle. He is going to give her a miracle. I want you to yell, everybody in this house, three times say a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. Listen, I want you to per- point to mama. The devil's been telling you this is the end of the line. The devil is a liar. I like you, mama. And people I like, we pray for it. You ain't going nowhere until the good Lord says it's time. Are you are you hearing me? You ain't going no. Listen to me. You ain't going no. Not a person in this ministry or connected to this ministry is going anywhere until God calls them home. And let, until God calls. Get that thought out of your head. Your best days are yet to come. Come on, say live. Live. Everybody say live and not die. Say live and not die. Say live in the mighty name. Now begin. 
begin to pray over her. Oh, Intercede over Jesus. her. Long life. Long life. You ain't done yet. Healing don't you receive that. Mama, don't receive, oh, don't receive it. Don't receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Don't receive it. Newness of strength. Thank you. Jesus. Newness of strength. Newness of strength. Newness of strength. Newness of strength. Good to see you, Regina. Newness of strength. And it is so. Clap your hands and give God praise. Let go. Let go and let go. Let go. Let go. Let it go. Let go. Oh, that's what, but listen. Let go. Did your report come back yet? What did it say? <laughs> Lift up your hands. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of fear. No fear. I rebuke the spirit of fear in the no name of Jesus. Fear. I rebuke fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh. No Take your hands off of no. her in the name of Jesus. Listen, no I hear in the spirit, first you accepted the terms that the enemy presented mm. your family. You were sitting down pondering that. Stop it. No By the time my father was, I was at this age, my father already started, ha started having heart attacks. When the enemy came to give me one, he came for it, but there was no seed for him to attach to to give it to me. And I rebuked that spirit of fear. The Bible says men hearts fail them because of fear. Do not receive that ever again. Matter of fact, I want to pray and in six weeks, you're going to go back. They're going to, where, oh, where is Andre? Andre had a heart condition. How many of you guys were with us then? Andre had a heart condition, and a doctor told him he was living on less than, what, what was it? 20%. 20%. They said there was no recovery. He went back a few months later. He, they said his heart was up to what? 35%. Thank you, Jesus. From a history of congenital heart failure. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, telling you, yeah, six yeah. weeks from now, when you go back, there will be no sign of what happened if you receive this word. Oh, Are you listening to me? Lift up your hands. Give me, give me some healing hands. I speak to that in the name of Jesus. I also rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. Say to the Lord, rebuke you right now. I command you to leave this woman of God. I command you to leave this woman of God. I command you to leave this woman of God. No more fear. No Thank more you, fear. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No more fear. No, you are not your mother. No, you are not your no, father. No, you are Lorraine, no, Sophia, no, Davis, in the name of Jesus, and you are free. No, in the name of no, Jesus, no, no more fear. I cast you out. No, I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. Thank you, Jesus. Six weeks from now, have them check your heart. I want you to do an echocardiogram and whatever thing that is, what is the other test they do? I'm hearing that echocardiogram. Have them do it six weeks from now. It'll be gone. Don't you receive it again. You're free. Watch this now. I replace this with the gift. Listen, give me some oil. Give me some oil. Watch this. I replace that now with the gift of healing. I impart healing, 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 as soon as it's done, it's going to flip. You know I love you. You know I love you. As soon as you do it, it's going to flip. Listen, we... Won't he do it? Won't he do it? 
Won't Does anybody else want prayer really quick? I can't, I can't move on. I can't move on. If anybody else wants prayer, come now. Come now. Come now. I heard this in the spirit. Listen. I heard this in the spirit. Oh my goodness. Yes. Stay with us. Intercession. Uh-uh. Welcome to intercession. Y'all go and put them hands out and start praying. Ain't no relaxing. No relaxing days. It's over. All done. Y'all labor and I labor. Yes. You wait till y'all get this 24-hour text messages on me sending y'all. <laughs> I hear this song. You may not know it. Does this song mean anything to you? Walk with me, Lord. Does it mean anything? Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me while I'm on this teacher's journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Oh. And lift up your hands. What are we praying for? You tell me. I know what I hear in the spirit. I want to touch and agree with you. With me. The Lord spared him already once, Walk right? You know why he's still here? Because of your prayers. And he's going to keep sparing them. Walk are you listening to me? me? It's already done. It's done. You want to know why? And now I get the song because God is walking with you. He may not be walking with him so much, but for your sake. Are you listening to y'all not trying to hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. For your sake, God is going to keep him. Don't a day, don't let a day pass that you don't call his name out and give God praise for walking with you. And, and because you walk with God, he's gonna keep him around. Are you listening? Are you listening? Don't worry. Don't worry, minister, I rebuke every fear. I rebuke every fear. I rebuke every fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Every fear, I cast out the spirit of fear that has come against you, that's trying to tell you that you're going to lose that child. Uh -uh. Not when you're walking with God. God, no. God is going to keep him for your sakes. God's going to keep him for your sake. I declare it. Ranking by ranking. I speak against that spirit that has been assigned to him. A premature death. I cancel that assignment. I cast it out. And I speak life and long life over you. Life and long life over that child. In the name of Jesus. How you doing? Hey, brother, my son. Walk with me. Oh. Y'all better be praying over here. Come on, stretch those hands out. Stretch those hands out. Oh, you know this song too? You know this song? You know this song? Oh, that's interesting. How can I help? Huh? Where? It's about this shit, Claude, and they see. What did the doctor say about it? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with Intercessor, stretch your hands. Stretch your hands towards this woman of God. Listen, Shabbat Shimatishe, Zebrin Katashev. That is a spirit. What that spirit is trying to do, it's a spirit of infirmity. Okay? And it, and it was brought about by a broken heart in a relationship. It was a relationship maybe six months ago. Does that sound right? About six months ago, maybe a year. You were in a relationship, Walk and that person heard you. Me, Lord. 
Wow. Walk lift up your hands. With me. Come on, come on, lift them up. Yeah, uh-uh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 it's all right. 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 He's a restorer. Listen, he's a restorer. Lift up your hands, daughter. Lift up your hands. Go lift them up. That, that struggle. To, yes. Fix my heart. Fix my heart. Hold her up. Hold her up, Rob. Hold her up. Fix my heart. Fix my heart. Fix my heart. Yeah, but take sheep by the clay. Loose this woman right now. Loose this woman. Every addiction. Listen, every addiction. God said, I'm releasing you from the addiction. I'm releasing you from the addiction now. You are free in the mighty name of Jesus. Loose her. Okay, let us let her go. Bless her. Come on, Tasha. Take a walk. I want Jesus to he say, Rama, huh? In the name of Jesus, you all right? Hi, Dominique. Give me a hug. Bless my daughter, Lord. Bless my daughter. Keep her strength in her, Lord. Order her steps in your room. Rama, order her steps. Order her steps. Order her steps. Order her steps, Lord. Order her steps. Peace into every facet of her family, Lord. Peace in the every aspect of the home. Peace, Lord. Peace where she lives. Peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore. As you have restored us so many times, we declare it so now in Jesus' name. Love you. Oh. And it's done. And it's done. A month ago, two months ago, you were up testifying about the goodness of God and breakthrough. Did you not know the devil was going to attack you? When you took a walk, it was to remind you what God has already did. Let's try that again. Take a walk, but this time walk in victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to warn you, listen, before we, get, before we get to the intercessors, listen to me. Before we get to the intercessors, I'm telling you, those of you who have been seeing blessings in your 320, expect the enemy to come. But if you praise God, just as fast as he came, he will leave. Because you can't curse what God has called blessed. Listen. We want to prepare. You may be seated. Give me about another 10 minutes. Woo! You're a millionaire, Regina. I keep telling you, did you find that dog yet? Are you looking? A hairless, right? Was it the hairless one we are talking about? Okay. That. <laughs> that. Actually, I need that. Okay. Oh, Joe's going to hold it? Okay, listen, real soft, give us a few moments. What an honor to be a part of this. Intercessory prayer. Listen, intercessory prayer is so important to a prophetic ministry. There will be days when the power of God will flow, and it's not because of me. It's because of the prayers of the intercessors. You all are critical to this ministry critical did you not notice when we were in the prayer room and you started praying it changed the atmosphere how many of you guys noticed that that is the anointing that you are going to be carrying after today we went on a four week class and we did a test some did not pass the test some did not, and we had, to do a, we had to do a whole different day and a whole different test. I'm, I'm serious about this thing because I know for a fact that I'm still standing here because of the prayers of intercessors. Amen. How many of you have ever called your mama and said, Mama, have you been praying for me? Have you ever been there? Daddy, you've been praying for me. 
If you've ever been in a car wreck or something happens and in your heart you know you're still there because of the prayers of somebody else. <laughs> These are the people that has accepted the call to say that I'm going to intercede for the body of Change Church. I lay myself in surrenderance to live a sacrificial relationship with God so I can intercede for the people of God. When y'all text me, I'm going to be texting them. MIT will tell you, when God speaks to me, I'll send a text in and I expect a reply. Three, four, five in the morning, I, because you're called to intercessory prayer. Somebody say you called to it. And so, can we just pray for them before the sermon starts, before this, this takes about 10 minutes? Can you stretch forth your hands and begin to pray for these people who will selflessly, selflessly be praying for you? Come on, intercede for these people. Intercede for these people. And it is so... In Jesus' name. Stay up here, son. Come up, come up here with me. Second Corinthians 1 and 11 says, But you must help us to, by praying for us. For much thanks and praise will go to God from you who sees his wonderful answers to your prayers for our safety. Philippians 1 and 19, I'm going to keep on being glad for I know that as you pray for me and as the Holy Spirit helps me, this is all going to turn out for my good. Your prayers are going to let every single person that is connected to this ministry, their situation is going to turn out for their good. Please stand not just, just you guys. Everybody else, you can sit down. Intercessors, please stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for each and every person here, Lord, who will move in the prophetic intercession for this ministry, that will pray down miracles in the name of Jesus, that will pray down healings in the name of Jesus, that stop the hand of death in the name of Jesus, that will intercede and find strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that will be called on the name of Jesus in service, Lord, to fight against the devil, Lord, who will put their lives on the line for your service, Lord, to ensure that the people of God are safe and have victory in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you praise for this opportunity to say yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to your service, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, assign your angels, make your angels manifest to them, and let it be known that they're not praying by themselves, but they're praying with the angels that are assigned to them, that are over this ministry to help change people's lives. We declare it so now in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Intercessors, please come forward. Say, Clanda Simana. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, all to thee, my blessing. Surrender. Ministers, please come. I surrender all. Zebra na basha. I surrender all. Glory to the living God. Glory to the living God. Yeah. All, all, all to thee, thee all my, to thee, my, 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 Sit safe, oh, I, I surrender. Come on, help us sing that song. Oh, help me sing it, sing I, I, I surrender. surrender. I 
surrender. Oh, I surrender. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be so. To thee, let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. I surrender. I surrender. Oh, help me sing, sing. I, I, I surrender. surrender. I surrender. surrender. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I surrender. I surrender. To the blessed Savior, I surrender. Amen. In Leviticus, when Moses was fulfilling the rite of ceremonial cleansing, he gave specific instructions so the unclean would be ingratiated back into the fold. Anything that was separating them from the service of the Lord would be removed and they would be ceremoniously cleansed. Today we activate these people prophetically for consecrating them to the service of intercession. Intercessions or intercessors live in love, realizing that they are midwives. They stand in the gap for you. They stand in the gap for you. They're the bridge. And they ensure that your destiny is not aborted by constantly calling on the name of Jesus on your behalf. That the goodness or the plan of God is revealed in your life. Intercessors, they discern the move of God. And they intercede for the salvation of people. The apostle and the first lady of this house and the ordained assignment of change church. The intercessory ministry is a mandate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you questions, no music, because I want to make sure I hear all of your statements. If you agree with these statements, you will answer by saying, I will, so help me God. Say that with me, intercessors. Say, I will, so help me God. Intercessors, do you vow to intercede to thwart the purpose and counsel of darkness against the people of God through the power of Jesus Christ? You will say, I will, so help me God. I will, so help me God. Do you vow to intercede that the will of Christ is done and the purpose of God finds expression? You will say, I will, so help me God. Do you vow to intercede that the plot of darkness is destroyed from individuals, families, nations, territories? Say, I will, so help me God. I will, so help me God. Do you vow to intercede that the church is empowered to move beyond all spiritual limitations, every witchcraft and every plot and ploy of the enemy? You will answer and say, I will, so help me God. Do you vow to intercede that negative outcomes in our lives and the lives of our loved ones are turned around and they work out for our favor? You will say, I will, so help me God. Do you vow to faithfully serve Change Church, the ministry, and those who God has assigned as leaders to this church? You will say, I will, so help me God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare, Lord, a willful heart of surrenderance. A willful heart of surrenderance. A willful, yes, Lord. Nobody was begged. Nobody was coyed. They have willfully, Lord, said yes. And I pray, Lord, as you activate them, every gift of the Spirit that has been buried on the inside manifest in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Before God, you've made a vow. Keep this vow, and God will visit you and manifest himself to you 
each and every time you pray. What we're going to do now is we're going to begin to anoint ourselves. This is a part of your prophetic activation. Talim, Laura, can you go through? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to anoint both your eyelids. This is prophetic token as to say my eyes are committed to God. And I will be sensitive to the things that I watch. Therefore, Lord, give me the grace to activate my prophetic seeing. Lord, let me see visions, both open and closed visions, inner visions and outer visions. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are anointing both your eyelids. Next, I want you to put the oil on your right ear. This is a prophetic token as to say that my ears are committed to God and I will be sensitive to God's voice. Father, I activate their hearing so they can hear the voice of God with clarity in the name of Jesus. Lord, give me the grace to activate a hearing so I can hear your voice clearly. Next, put oil on your right thumb. This is a prophetic token as to say that my strength is dedicated to God first. And I will be sensitive of how I use my body. Realizing my sacrifice of an intercessor begins with giving God the best part of me. Therefore, Lord, give me the grace to activate new strength and tenacity. To respond to you when you call me to intercede for a cause. In the mighty name of Jesus. Next, I want you to put the oil on your right big toe. We're only doing what Moses did. If you can't reach your toe, we'll pull up a chair. You can put your foot in the chair and get to it. Pull up a chair. Thank you, man of God. Etabo sha simrin ka sebana sha. Zete o asinkana. This is a prophetic token as to say, Lord, give me the grace to be led by your spirit into battles. That I will have the technology and the information to win graciously by the power of Jesus Christ. Lord, order my steps so everywhere my feet tread is a step of progress and not a setback. A step of conquering and not a retreat in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 and 14, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, was the laying on of thy hands by the presbytery. Now I'm going to lay hands, we're going to pour oil, and we're going to lay hands on you. MIT, Kia, come on, prophet, prophetess Kia. Come on, apostle. Zebandi Sandamaha. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Ekale say, I hear you. I can hear you. I can hear. I can hear in the name of Jesus. I can hear. Lord, let me hear. Let me hear, Lord. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. I hear you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I hear you. Stacy, God is opening up your, your hearing. I rebuke every spirit that comes against your hearing. You're going to be able to hear the voice of God clearly for your whole family. You will be the intercessor, not for just this church, but for your family. I declare it so. Lift up your hands. Oh, I'm a seer. I'm a seer. Lord, I see. 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 Woo! You're going to see angels on people. You're going to see angels on people. Wow. I'm almost jealous. That's, almost, that's awesome. <laughs> angels in the name of Jesus. God's going to give you tactics or technology. You're going to speak. You're going to know your discernment is going to be off the chain. Your discernment is going to be king in the name of Jesus. What was the other thing that God said he gave you? I forgot. He, he's not bringing it to my attention now. Word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's so faithful. Lift up your hands, Father. Bless the work of my hands. In the name of... Oh! Because
because you said yes now, you're going to be promoted. God's going to open doors for you, but intercede for it. Intercede for us. Intercede. When God gives you wisdom, God said you must stay integrity. You must stay in your integrity because the things is going to show you. In the Oh, he already revealed yours, healer. He already revealed yours, healer. Lift up your hands. I'm going to be calling you when people need healing. The first person on, on your way out, I don't want you to lay hands on mama. Every time, mama, what's your whole name? What's your whole name, mama? Elena Bell. B-E-L-L? -L? Elena Bell, that's your first assignment. Elena Bell. Amen. Lift up your hands. Ooh, wisdom. Mm, wisdom and knowledge. The word of wisdom and knowledge. The word of wisdom and knowledge. The word of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, we declare and decree over that right now. Pop, so you sent him there as a mighty armor bearer, Lord, as a mighty man of God, to be your senior statesman of this ministry, to intercede for men issues, Lord, in crises, Lord, in the strength in this man of God as he intercedes, Lord. We declare it so now. <laughs> Lift up your hands. A midwife, you will help labor to bring the people into their calling. You're here to keep me encouraged, Mama, to tell me to push. I see you as a midwife. Push, pastor. Push, apostle. Push this ministry out. Push it out. Don't give up. Don't give in. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. Push. God's going to be waking you up. He says, pray for the man of God. He's in a battle. You're going to see directly into my life. You're going to start noticing and seeing things for me. You're going to be seeing and interceding. Push. 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 Yeah, my midwife, the ministry. That's why God sent you here. God sent you here. God sent you here to help push this ministry out. Help me push it out. Help me push it out. Hey! She brought Hi, seer. You're a seer. You're gonna see. After service, we're gonna talk about the Holy Ghost because I didn't want to throw you under the bus. Open Open our eyes. Lift up your hands. See her. See her. You've been seeing already. You've been seeing since you got the mantle. You've been seeing. It's going to be off the chain. Same thing with the prophetess down there. Seeing. You're going to see. You're going to see. I declare it so. Now, I'm hearing other things in the spirit, but this is what I want to give you. Seeing. Lift up your hands, Yoli. Say by Daka. See, 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 a prophetess. Wow. You are loaded with gifts. Loaded. God sent you here to activate and bring you into a place of blessings. You are going to be one of the chief prophets here of Change Church. Listen to me. The word, there's a word in your belly already. There was a word in you going to be off the chain. Prophet, I need you to make sure you keep God first and do not be distracted with the things that the enemy brings to you. Are you listening? Prophet, do you receive that title? I remember you said in your spirit, if they was going, if, if, wait, how'd you say it? If I'm a prophet, it's going to be revealed. You wasn't going to say nothing. That guy would tell me. Hi, prophet. <laughs> Hi, prophet. Words to the nation. Word to the nation. This would be a springboard. The ministry would be a springboard. Stay connected, stay in the grace, but you're going to bing and I'm like, okay, where's she at? Oh, she over there. Okay, well, praise God. Praying for your daughter. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands, prophet. And double shot, I release you. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Somebody give me a towel. Where's that towel? 
Le se kramba le se konda ma se rimba na ma sha. Se prom para ma she kana je konda ma sha. E pa na she. He pona as the oil flows. She pa na si. She pa na. She pa na ki she kona. I se pa na na se. Sherin kara, give me that green mantle. Give me the green mantle. Vatida boto kata dashi. Yes, yes, yes. Release it. Release it. Yes. The green one. No, no. I need that green one. Zerin bako she prana ha. Zerin polo she fana kase. Romania sing anio toklani. Kate kande kesha. Ponia sing de. Jiklande. Jiklande. Pony katere kaji klam o okota ishe tane de kase tane de kase chami she prande chai she prande you throw it on prophet throw it on her no from the back throw it on from the back oh grana baha this symbolizes productivity now productivity things that you've lost now will be restored things prophet things that speak a word don't be scared to call me up and give me a word yes that's part of your training yeah yep yep call me up be like pastor i hear this in the spirit do me like that two o'clock three o'clock in the morning because i know he's already started dealing with you on it we declare it so now in jesus name amen put the red one on her quickly put the red one on stay there put the red one on whoo whoo ramana hashe Kanesi Panaha, anoint his stay there, Basha, Talin, throw this on the back of her. Anoint, she come, come on, come on, give me the black one. Yeah, Tani de Shigma, restoration, restoration of a family. Ebranesi Kanabashe, Kanebashi, throw that on the back of her. In the name of Jesus, in Likina, restoration of your soul, the brokenness from all the pain that you have been through, restoration, and then influence. God said, I'm giving you influence, influence, wealth, oh, wealth, 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 put that on the and the grace to serve me, Ursula, the grace to serve me, you will find that I am difficult, you will find that I am difficult. And I demand excellence. I demand. But God's going to give you the grace to serve. And it is so in the name of Jesus. And the Bosha. Hey! Yay! Yibadasha. Hey! Rabakosha. And you're free. And you're free. Ladies and gentlemen, turn around, please. Please turn around. These are your intercessors, your, your people who will be praying for you. Give God a praise and encourage the people of God. Is that how you do, people? Who's going to intercede for your mess, intercede you through your trauma, intercede you through your crises? And it is so. Intercessors, serve in peace. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. The next intercessory class is next year. Y'all should have got on. I was hearing y'all spirit. I heard that. I heard. Oh. I'm a <laughs> was that really? You the worst. <laughs> I, I love you though. I love you. Listen, it is time. <laughs> it is time for our giving. It is time for. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the help, Jesus. Thank you for the help. Thank you for the help. Thank you for the help, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for lighting in the load. Thank you for the help, Father, positioning them so we can grow. So we can be about your business, Father, now. So we can pray down those things that have been hindering us, Lord. We declare it so now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, as we prepare for our giving on this morning. Amen. As we prepare for our giving, I'm asking everyone to get a gift in your hand. Oh, we don't have a lot of babies today. 
I get to save some money. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. As we're preparing for our giving, I got some great news I want to share with you guys. This is great news. Listen, on the 1st of July, we will be starting our seven-day fast. Let's Yes, that means you don't eat on 4th of July until 3.30. Sacrifice. Get wise. Just set your plate aside. Just set the plate aside. Put your name on it. Amen. If you guys ever come from big families, you know how to write your name on it. Wrap it up in saran wrap. <laughs> yes. Put it on the other screen for me, champ. These, these are our fast sebran, Katisha. Our fast petition is release it, Lord. Isaiah 58 and 6, allow me to call forth the miracles already inside of me. Upon completion, read our dismissal prayer where you conclude your fast daily and take communion. We do have communion. Dr. Butts, did you bring the, uh, okay. If you guys want communion cups, you can take some. We have the dismissal pair of books. Thank you, Mama. Uh, and it's on the website, changechurch.com, org. Thank you. I'm tripping. Change, changechurch.org. Amen. Um, that's it. Listen, hey, son, can you get my wallet, please? I want everybody to please come and bring a gift to God. And listen, listen to these prophetic It was a financial loss. It wasn't a relationship. Yeah, the, the enemy is trying to give you a financial loss. That's what I was like, fine, I see relationship and loss. See me after church. All right. All right. As you lay your offerings on the ground, as you lay your off, tell God what it's for. Okay? Bring your gifts up. Bring your gifts up. And as you're coming, lay it on the floor and tell God what your gift is for. All my babies, come on, come on, babies, that do not have an offering. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, man, how long you going to be here, man? How long you going to be here? Huh? Okay, because I got some work for you. <laughs> Where my baby's at? Did you guys tell God what that was for? While you're standing, tell God what it's for. You have an offering? Oh, you already gave? What? How much did you give? Huh? You gave $10? Oh, man, you trying to hustle me? Here. I will give you that. That's, listen. When you get older and you start working and you tithe, this is what God does. It may not come from the pastor, but he'll open doors for you. Become a tither, all right? Remember that. That's for you. Keep that. That's for you. You already gave. Where my other babies at? You can give it or keep it. You can give it or keep it. You can give it or keep it. Come here, Wilhelmina. You, that's what God does. When you give to him... He'll find a way to give back to you. He'll find a way to give back to you. Did you give yet? See, you trying to hustle the system, bro. <laughs> give. And he'll give it back to you. That's what God will do. Kimmy, did you guys give yet? Here. You can keep it. You can keep it. Or you can give it. It's up to you. You can keep it or give it. Totally up to you. Okay, you gonna keep it? Okay, here you go, little man. Cause you so, God bless you. That's yours. Amen. Where you offering that daughter? How much did you give? Five? 
Amen. The Lord said he'll give to you, press down, shaking together, running over. This is what tithing does. It's a spiritual principle. It don't always come from me, but he'll open doors for a college education. He'll open doors for you. This is yours. You can sow it or you can keep it. You can sow it or you can keep it. Ah, here, this is yours. That's yours. <laughs> Listen, let's read our giving statement together. Listen, young people, we're teaching them the principle of giving. We want you to be blessed. Learn at a young age, and God's going to bless you. Let's read our confession together. Here we go. One, two, three. Lord, I confess this is my best sacrifice I live to thee. Lord, send prosperity now, according to Psalms 118 and 25. I denounce every negative confession over my finances and investments, properties, properties I own and will own in Jesus' name. I declare money comes to me now to fulfill my destiny and aid me in my kingdom purpose. I am not broke. I have more than enough. I'm not living in lack. I'm living in the surplus of abundance. Offering empowers my church to have more than enough. I seed by faith for our global expansion that will result in worldwide missions and acts of kindness. As a tither, the devourer is rebuked. My harvest is protected in obedience to your word. I declare and decree that I now live in the overflow, and it is so in Jesus' name. And it is so. Clap your hands and give them praise. Come on, clap your hands and give them praise. Thank you for your giving and your generosity. Amen. 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 Come on, Tyler. Will, get that seed in your hand. I want to bless it before you leave. Did you already give it? Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be so. You know why, and you know who, and you know how, and you know what you're going to do. And we declare it so now in Jesus' name. Let's say amen for Prophet Joe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to see her. Hallelujah. Church, okay? right, Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you can come with me. Congratulations. Hey. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. Come on back with me. Hey, Prophet. I hope you guys realize the significance oh, yeah, of yeah. what just happened. So, what's going on oh, in your life? Why am I troubled by you? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, there we okay. go. I hope you guys realize the significance yeah. of what just happened. Nothing. We, 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 don't, we don't talk <laughs> like that. Um, thank you, Ashley. Oh. Oh, God. oh, okay. Well, praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> oh, Pastor. Okay. What's going on? Hold on, sir. Okay. I hope you guys realize the significance of what just happened. Um, there's been numerous times where standing here, uh, and I, I tell them, I tell the apostle this all the time, like it is a, it is truly an honor to serve. But there's been numerous times where I've discerned the presence of the Lord Jesus, like as if Jesus himself is standing here. And this has happened today. And I want to read to you a verse. It's Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 19 through 20. It says, for I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. So as we are crucified on the cross with Christ, we were now resurrected with Christ. And so it is no longer us who lives, but it is now Christ who lives forward. And so who just anointed you guys today? I, 
I'm telling you, on numerous occasions, but today especially, I felt the, I, the presence of the Lord Jesus himself was standing in this man. Though, yes, we see Apostle Wallace, but this was Jesus Christ himself standing here anointing you guys today. And so I hope that you really heard and received what was said because there is such a purpose and a plan for your guys' life and for all of your lives. But I really hope that you take it to heart because, man, I, I ain't gonna lie, I was a little jealous. I'm like, dang, I should have... <laughs> Should have got, got in. But anyways, um, can we get the uh, dismissal prayer? No. Just a sidebar. Um, if you guys ever get the chance to look in the Blue Letter Bible, it's a website, the word Christ, it actually means anointed. The word means anointed. The word Christ means anointed. So it is no longer us who lives, but it is now Christ who lives. Anyways, let's go ahead and read this together. Uh, or sorry, let's, uh, let's stand as we uh, get into our dismissal prayer here. Ready? One, two, three. Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put God's name upon our children, and God will bless them. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant Johannes and concerning his house be established forever and do as thou hast said. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for such a mighty wave of your presence on this day, on this morning, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for what you are doing in this place, Lord, for lighting the load of the apostle, Father God, for spreading out your will, Lord, for spreading out your, your, uh, your presence, your miracle, your power, Lord. Thank you for the filling of you in us, O oh God. Lord, thank you for such a mighty move, Lord, for giving us purpose, O oh God, for giving us a purpose in the kingdom, Lord, that your will may go forward, that more people may come to know you, that, that more people may come to see the light of you in us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for always being so mindful of us, for keeping us and providing for us and making ways and opening doors, Lord. We pray may the truth of you, may the light of you, Lord Jesus, continue to enter into our eyes. May the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of your calling in Jesus' high and mighty name that you may be glorified above and above all in jesus name we thank you lord amen and amen now go live the changed life god bless you guys we'll see you next week